Okay, Jamie, I just wanted to uh, address some of the questions. We're getting uh, all kinds of questions from uh, your followers on Facebook. Uh, Jordy wants to know the impact of modern gear. Does it mm. make climbing easier now that you've got new equipment? Great question. I don't know if the modern gear makes the climbing any necessarily easier, but it certainly makes it safer. And uh, that's one of the big things I think that we did really well on this trip with uh, Haynes Brands, our title sponsor, and with partners like Mountain Hardware. I think we really had great gear on the mountain to keep us warm. And ultimately, then, if, if you are warm and functioning properly, you're consuming less calories, you have more energy. So it does have a trickle-down effect to making things more, more easy on the climb. And that's not even to talk about the technical gear, ice axes and crampons. They're lighter, they're more durable. So whether you like it or not, gear is a big, big part of succeeding and being safe on any mountain. In your apparel, what do you want? Well, you want it to uh, look good. <laughs> First, first <laughs> priority, right? You got to look oh. cool on the mountain. You know what's great about a lot of the companies <laughs> making outdoor gear now is that it is actually starting to be fashionable. Stuff looks good. When I was a kid, you know, we were so my, my stepdad was sewing stuff in the basement on the machine, and and you kind of came out walking like that kid from a Christmas Carol. It's it's. Um, uh, you, you're looking for fit and performance, number one. And if you can add fashion into that loop, then then you're pretty lucky. Jen wants to know, what kinds of things do you tell yourself to stay motivated when things really get tough? Mm. Well, they, they, get, they always get tough. And uh, I think what, the first step is to expect it uh, so that you're not surprised. Uh, then once you're in the field and it does get tough, you're not shocked or worried about it. You're like, oh, yeah, I knew this. And you remember that you've trained for it. Uh, so the toughness is actually part of uh, helping you earn the right to succeed. So I actually try to welcome it when it gets tough because then I know, all right, now we're getting into it. So just a bit of a mind shift before you go into it. And then I also, once I'm in the middle of it, whether I'm in a training run before the climb or in the climb itself, I just remind myself that, that uh, if, if I quit today, yes, the pain will stop, but then are you willing to live with the dull ache that might come with the knowledge of having given up? And I'd rather try a little bit harder for a little bit longer just so that I know I've reached my limit. And at that point, quitting is the right thing to do. But we often do it a little too soon. So I'm always challenged just a little bit more just so you know. Uh, Teresa has got a question I think that follows from this because uh, she wants to know about uh, what you do to overcome any doubts that uh, might get in the way of a climb. And I'm wondering if you think the doubts are actually something that could be destructive. I think they can be almost the opposite. Those little doubts that sneak in are often a, a voice coming from somewhere speaking to you about uh, maybe some potential problems. So I will actually give audience to that doubt because in it you may find uh, a problem that you haven't addressed. And I'll take a look at it and realize, ooh, I didn't think of this, and therefore I need a strategy around it, and I should think about it. And then if, if, if that's not the case, then I'll just try to dismiss it. So I try to deal with it really rationally. Am I going to make it? Well, God, you can't answer that question. I don't even think about that. Is my gear going to hold up? So there's these large doubts and then little doubts that come in. I always give them audience, see if it can help me in my preparation so that I haven't missed something, and then get rid of it. Veronica is intrigued by the uh, effects of altitude. In particular, she wonders, is it tough to, to sleep? And also, what do you dream about at night? <laughs> That's a great question, Veronica. I, it's really tough to sleep. I found it uh, equally tough to sleep before I left. Just cause <laughs> I was stressed and filled with doubt. So uh, that keeps you up at night. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's one of those indicators that lets you know, hey, we're really on to something. You're, you're amped up. You're excited. You're engaged in your life. You're not sleeping. Uh, that means something. At altitude, it, it uh, happens all the time, and uh, it's difficult. Now, you don't always have to worry about it, though, because just lying down in your tent, reassure yourself that, okay, I'm not getting nice deep REM sleep, but my body is recovering. So I'll just tell myself, don't sweat it. You are getting some recovery. But altitude does rob you very quickly of your ability to sleep. When you do get some sleep, it's often filled with crazy dreams. I, some I don't even want to admit or talk about. Just nutty stuff. I often have big balloon people attacking me with little tiny heads, shouting things at me. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, sometimes you have uh, wonderful dreams of flying and, and dreams of family. And, and so there is some dreaming, and it's often much more bizarre than you experience back home. Stephanie wants to know about family. Do you uh, think a lot about your your wife and your children up there, and do you miss them? Oh, boy. Yeah, a lot. You know, this time on Everest was uh, my fourth, and uh, but my first time with uh, a family. I was uh, married not, after my, not long after my first, well, a week after my first trip. 
proposed to my wife on the on Everest. And, uh, and, I, and since then, we've uh, embarked on the adventure of parenthood. So I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old at home. And uh, that was probably one of the more difficult parts of the trip. Just that inside pain of missing people you really love and being in a dangerous place. There were times when doubt creeped in. If, you know, I, I get killed here. It's just not me that's going to be impacted by this. I'm my, I made a promise to those three people that I'd be back. So... Yeah, I, Scotty and I, my climbing partner, he's also a dad. He's got a little son named OB3. And we had lots of conversations just to talk it through in the tent to at least acknowledge that we were feeling heavy and blue and sad and beaten up and just wanted to go home. So, yeah, I missed them terribly. And uh, But when, when Kobe and, and Barbara and Jayla flew, they came in a trek to base camp, and uh, not all the way to base camp, but close to it. And when they left, uh, they left in a helicopter, and Kobe's in the front seat wearing my ball cap, and he looks over to me, and I've got lots of tears behind my sunglasses, but I'm not letting him see him. And, he, and he's a big smile. He's in the helicopter. He says, Dad, you go climb that mountain. <laughs> and I thought about that all the time. And I was like, yeah, son, I'm going to go climb that mountain. Motivating factor for Oh, you. huge. Motivation to, to, to survive and to live. But, you know, you're a nine-year-old, buddy's back home. He's like, Dad, yeah, yeah, you go do it. I'm like, oh, we are going to go do it. <laughs> All right, and Jamie Ryan, and many other people, by the way, also wrote this in. Uh, what's the next lofty goal? <laughs> you know, that's the most common question, second to uh, how do you go to the bathroom on Mount Everest, <laughs> to which the answer is quickly. Uh, but what's next? And, and, you know, I think at this point, uh, the question is not so much uh, one that we should direct to me, what's next, but uh, all the people who follow along and hopefully are inspired by the adventure. You know, what's next for you? What's your Everest? And uh, that's a really important part of me or this legacy. We've gone off and climbed a mountain, had this fantastic adventure. We're able to reach the summit. Uh, but through our webpage, liveoutthere.com, well, I want to share these stories and inspire people to contemplate what their Everest is, and then, uh, you know, identify their team and get some Sherpas together and uh, buy a permit, get a route lined up and uh, manage some avalanches and, and some ice falls and get up there where the wind blows and the views are lofty and uh, stand upon their summit. So maybe we, we should stop asking me what's next and, uh, you know, ask ourselves, well, what's my Everest? How can they keep in touch with you, Jamie? We have, uh, I think the, the Facebook has been an amazing success. Uh, so there's the Facebook page, which is a wonderful spot to communicate and connect. And then at, at the web page, uh, liveoutthere.com, there's, uh, you know, it's uh, connected to our store, but it's uh, more about, uh, not just about gear, but about inspiring people to uh, live their dreams and uh, climb that mountain. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Larry. Thank you.